here it is at last project paradise <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now there are two main things I want to mention before this video hits off. Number one, you don't have to sit and stare and watch this video. There are some beautiful visuals that will be on the screen and some text kind of explaining bits and bobs about this project, but a lot of it is a voiceover and you can kind of have it as a podcast style. You know, just pop your headphones in and go around your day-to-day -day task or leave it on the background on the telly. The information is the important part, not what you see on the screen. However, if you do want to see some of the stick insects I've had in my collection and you want some nice visuals, then please do stick around and sit and watch. Plus, I would love to get comments from you guys on your thoughts and opinions on this video. Uh, number two, and the more exciting thing, at 8 p.m. UK time, so that will be exactly an hour after this video first went live, okay? 8 p.m. host v. host battle for Fatal Fangs 3. Kind of like a, a warm-up, a, a, a session for you to kind of know what to expect from the Fatal Fangs 3 tournament. Now this will be hosted on Amy's channel from Pet Rock and Roll and it will be me versus Amy. So I hosted the first couple of Fatal Fangs, she's hosting the third Fatal Fangs and we're battling out between me and her just for a bit of fun, just to kind of show you guys what to expect. So please make sure to be a subscriber of Pet Rock and Roll. If you're watching this premiere right now, the live premiere, Amy, please feel free to drop a link to your channel or to the video that's going out tonight so people can quickly click on that one and set their reminders. If Amy unfortunately can't make it, can somebody please drop a link below because it's gonna be a cracking video. Now, without further ado, I think it's time we get into Project Paradise. Phasmids, also commonly known as stick insects, walking sticks, stick bugs and more. These fascinating arthropoda come in a vast array of shapes, sizes and colours. Their observed astonishing behaviours and unique ways of life have gripped me for an entire decade. But sadly, the stick hobby within the United Kingdom is failing, at least in my perspective of things. You may well spot extensive volumes of species such as Periphasma schultii, Extatosoma tiaratum, Eurocantha calcarata, Carassus morosus, and potentially another handful or two of other species. So why do I feel that our hobby is on the decline, and how can Project Paradise fight back against the reduction of enthusiasm within the UK market? Please allow me to express my concerns now. Many of us in the UK act like ravens in the hobby. We see something shiny and we want to own it. This isn't always a bad thing. However, in a hobby that has minimal research compared to the keeping of many other exotic invertebrates, it becomes dangerous for thriving colonies of phasmids within captivity. Whereas in Europe, the hobby is continuously on the uprise. So EU, I applaud you. Allow me a moment to express my personal thoughts and opinions on why I feel that we are failing in the UK for this hobby. Now let's say for example's sake that 10 of our best and well-known keepers and breeders start raising newly discovered, rare or even just uncommon species within our market. Their extensive experience prevails and they have a bunch of healthy and flourishing young nymphs or over for sale. When these offspring go on the market, like any true breeders, they will be asking for higher prices due to the hard work and effort put in place. And rightly so too. It's not easy raising species with next to no information base on them, aside from locality research. Now let's say 100 keepers or hobbyists have their eyes on these batches of nymphs or over. Probably around 50% of these keepers are going to refuse to pay these high prices, especially newer ones. 
knowing that they can get more common species that are still beautiful and readily available for less than half that price. Plus there's so many who have raised some of these species that's so commonly available in the UK that there is a more extensive range of care information out there. That would leave 50 people willing to purchase these nymphs or ova. Likely the rest will end up flowing back to the EU traders. Again, well done EU. I'd guess around half of the remaining 50 UK buyers will fail this new population due to lack of experience or naivety to the care requirements. Believing perhaps tropical species living in the jungles of Borneo would have the same care as an arid Australian species. This would now leave around 25 buyers with nymphs or over. 25 out of our already small population of stick enthusiasts is an incredibly low number. The likelihood of all these 25 then being successful even with experience is highly unlikely. We still need to take into account the following. Boredom of the species. Better rates of purchase from the EU. Lack of knowledge of these species, especially the newer ones. And shorter general lifespans of the animals too. This would drop our figure of 25 down to more like 5 to be successful. Again, this is all based on what I have seen in my time of keeping and isn't actually factual figures, but they are figures I remain to stand by for opinion's sake. We also have to take into account the general mortality rate of young nymphs. If these buyers can only afford a batch of 10 over, the term for stick insect eggs, or just a sexed pair perhaps, they won't be establishing a thriving colony very easily and are again more likely to fail. Now you've listened to the morbid side of the hobby, I hope it's opened your eyes to the downturn of success, not to mention these animals' lives that are being carelessly messed with and lost. Now before I lighten your mood and tell you about my plans for saving this hobby with Project Paradise, there's one more negative I need to express. You must remember that many places have stick insects banned in captivity. As an example, almost the entire USA, to my knowledge, doesn't allow the keeping of phasmids. Now our brothers from over the pond do wonders for advertising hobbies. The tarantula hobby for example on YouTube sparks a great interest from all around the world, especially with the likes of people like Tom Moran, the Tarantula Collective and other amazing American keepers and YouTubers. But as they can't keep things like phasmids, they cannot show them off via their YouTube channels or other social media platforms nor will they be as likely to care for projects like mine. This chops a huge hole in the potential to get word out to save this hobby within the UK and now with Brexit on our hands we have left the EU, meaning our EU partners are having huge difficulties in providing the UK market with their wonderful animals. It's a total mess. How can we hope to succeed this hobby within the UK without this support network? What you've got to remember guys if you're from the EU or you're from somewhere else in the world, contributing to this project, to aiding Project Paradise, could benefit you too. It could allow cheaper phasmids where you are, or if you're in a location that cannot keep them, you're still helping an animal population thrive. So where does Project Paradise come into play exactly? It's quite possibly the largest and most extensive challenge I've ever set myself, with costs likely well over the £10,000 mark over the years, consuming my already limited spare time further to the point of almost no freedom, I will remain to pursue this project to the end. So what is the idea? Project Paradise is actually a combination of various tasks, which will eventually integrate into one major venture. I want to pee. No, I don't need to urinate. I mean pee, P-E-A, like the food. Standing for populate, educate and awaken. Populate the UK with uncommon or rare or new species. Educate the owners on their new pets for better success and awaken the world to the wonders of stick insect keeping and also the dangers our hobby is currently in. So how can I possibly achieve such goals and can I do this alone? Listen in as I express the plans of action. Task 1. The Gardens. 
I aim to grow a range of food plants within three locations, allowing me to easily access the animal's dietary requirements with a lot less foraging from long distance areas on a weekly basis, just to keep the animals healthy. Location 1 is my front yard. It's not very large, but provides enough space for a few plant species. I've aimed to make it a fern and euonymus garden. I'm not quite sure if I've pronounced euonymus correctly. Just let me know in the comments below if I've said it wrong. With just a few potted plants then to go around the edges. Location 2 is my friend's front yard. In this yard I'll attempt to grow hedging plants from large grow containers as well as potted trees. Lastly, Location 3, the base of operations for the Project Paradise Gardens. It's an allotment plot. I've owned a plot in this same location in the past and they are very good size with a safely gated area. The surrounding inside areas of the fencing are covered with bramble that's unaccessible to those without a key. With the bramble plants covered then, this allows me an entire plot to grow many varieties of edible plants known to the stick hobby, with a few veg patches too. This is the policy regarding an allotment, so I have to grow food for human consumption too, just to own the plot. But that's great, because any scraps of food that I don't consume will be perfect for things like my roaches and isopods. I'm currently on a waiting list for this plot, and it can take a fair while to be accepted. With the gardens then going to be flourishing, I will be able to constantly supply my animals with various plants and research whether they will take to other plant types. That moves us to task two then, the journal. I will be keeping track of the raising of all my species, jotting notes on behaviours, husbandry successes and mistakes, accepted experimental food plants and so on. Eventually, I'd like to use these notes, not only to create powerful care sheets, but also perhaps write a book on the care for phasmids in captivity. This idea, however, is an end game goal and won't happen speedily. Task three, raising the species. Pretty simplistic task to explain. Fortunately, I'm one of a few people to be trusted among some fantastic breeders to carry on their work at the right costs, of course. I will be purchasing from these specialist breeders and learning their care ways to raise some species that aren't so easily available here. Which takes us straight to task 4 now, dispersion. Once the raising of these species is successful, I will then in turn sell their offspring with care sheets for less than standard price to UK enthusiasts. I'll only sell to those that are willing to continue on to breed and sell some of their next generation. I'll also be readily available for them to contact for advice on these animals. So you might be thinking, why won't I just give them away for free if I'm trying to save this hobby? Sadly, when things are passed off free, any Tom, Dick or Harry will snatch them up, either for profit or just with little understanding meaning our chances of future generations of these phasmids are considerably lowered. Any profits made will go directly into Project Paradise to grow more plants, get new species and so on. But this leads on to one of the most important tasks ahead, one of which I need your help to achieve the desired goals, and that is task five, the Project Paradise team. That's right, I'll be looking for a team of UK stick lovers to aid me in this project. The aim will be to find a close-knit, small community of members who are trusted to devote themselves to the care of some of the animals I will be raising. For example, once I raise some species, I will then pass team members some over for free for them to raise. Again, they must agree to disperse their second generation across the UK afterwards to continue the growth of the hobby. They will get copies of the care sheets that I will create in great detail that will then be passed on to the people they sell to or trade with. If you're interested in being a team member, please do not contact me yet. I still need to work out all the kinks to allow this group to be as successful as possible before I open these opportunities. Keep an eye on my YouTube channel, but mostly on my Bug Realms Facebook page for these openings. This pretty much wraps up the plan. 
Five tasks that combined should at least begin to increase the love for this hobby and establish new cultures fully within the UK. It's my hoping that this will slowly eradicate the lack of care and understanding of newly available species over here. Let's hope one day, united, we can create a market as marvellous as the EU and hopefully go back to trading massively once these Brexit issues have been addressed, if they get addressed. Now, I do feel I need to add a side note here just to save any confusion. I'm not a man of the field, nor am I an importer. So when I say new species or rare species, I mean new or rare to the UK hobby, or perhaps new to the hobby in a whole, as in only entered into culture within the last year or so by our best breeders. Don't feel that I'm trying to outdo these breeders and traders in any way. In fact, it is because of these amazing people that I'll be able to expand the love of the hobby, which will in turn increase their sale potentials too. My cheaper selling goals are only to increase populations of species before I move on to the next species, not to belittle our breeders, but in fact help them build their network by showing the world these amazing animals. If I let a few batches go out for free, they tell their friends, my batches have sold out, who are they going to run to? Those same traders. I believe it will create a positive cycle of learning for all of us. So folks, if you wish to help with Project Paradise, you can do so by sharing this video across all invert related groups and spreading the word. There will also be new Project Paradise merch created to help fund this project with a fantastic design done by Mark Pennell. If you wish to help financially, you can become a disciple of the realm by Patreon or becoming a YouTube member by hitting that join button next to the subscribe. If Patreon is your preferred path, there is a link in the description below to do so. You can also donate to my PayPal via a link again in the description. Let me know what you're donating for, whether it's for plants, for species or so on, and then I can kind of shout you out uh, along the way too. Any videos you may produce or photos that you share that are linked with these phasmids, please hashtag Project Paradise so we can get this project underway and people can find this video easily and maybe join the team or just help spread the love for phasmids. If you have any ideas to help me fundraise, please do so as this is the most expensive project I'll ever go for in my life and I'll never forget any kindness shown by you all. Stick around for future updates and I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Take care, bye bye. So there we have it folks, Project Paradise. Five tasks put together could potentially equal success. Now I did mention merch in that video and it actually arrived before this video went live. So I'm wearing the hoodie right now. So we've got the little Project Paradise original logo here and we've got the big one on the back. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. Anyway, uh, there's also t-shirts as well. Mine happens to be in the wash right now. Um, so yes, the merch store is not live, but if you wanna get your hands on this merchandise early, please private message me through Facebook or Instagram, and I can tell you how you can get yours early. Um, I reckon the store will launch in probably a week or so for you to be able to actually purchase that merchandise whenever you want. So, that's it. Tell me what you think in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget to head over to Pet Rock and Roll's YouTube channel to watch me battle it out with her for a host v host battle. Take care, everybody. See you later.